Did you ever wish your two-year-old could do the dishes for you? <laughs> well, neither. But there's nothing wrong with giving her the option, is there? We're going to start by cutting the boards into one and a half inches wide strips. The wood is all three quarter inches thick. The long strips will be 37 and a half inches and the shorter ones will be about 16 inches long. First, we're going to glue up the long strips in pairs to form the legs of the tower. This is a good opportunity to remove any bows from the long strips by facing the concave sides together during glue up. I'm also using this level as a straight reference to clamp into. This ensures the legs are all straight when the glue dries. I've been saying we will, we do, etc. And I think this would be a good time for me to introduce the rest of the crew. This is Whiskey. He's the head of security and it doesn't hurt that he's easy on the eyes to keep me company as well. When the legs dry, we take it to the table saw to remove any glue squeeze out. We could do it with the chisel but this is much easier. And we could do it with the planer as well, but that would require having access to a planer, so table saw it is. We then proceed to cut the joinery that will connect the legs together. We're gonna half lap the short strips, connecting the four legs on three of the four sides. One side will remain open so that the tower has an access point. Maybe this all sounds a little too abstract at the moment, but it should make more sense as the build progresses. So hang on, you'll see, we'll get there. Here I'm just cleaning up the top joint with a chisel, because I'm that fancy. Okay, maybe that was not as impressive as I thought it would be. Regardless, we're gonna cut some more joinery. We need four levels of stretchers for this tower. So three more half laps to go. These stretchers are going to be responsible for the integrity of the whole tower, so the dados must be cut precisely to the width of the stretchers. It's easier to sneak up on the fit than it is to try and guess the exact size. So I just take one of the stretchers to compare to the dado, I'm cutting and slowly adjust the stop block on the crosscut slab until I have a perfect fit. Don't try it and rush this part, you really don't want to lose connection here. Or maybe you do, I don't really know you. But, once the stop block is set, I cut the next set of dados on all four legs and try to see if it fits. As you can see here, it doesn't, but it is close. So I slowly move the stop block ahead at a time until the stretcher can plop into the groove. And... Wait for it... And... Would you look at that! It fits! Amazing! Come on, look at it! Okay, it's not that impressive, but... Then, it is just a matter of doing the exact same thing a couple times more, for all four levels. Two of the legs will get the groove in two directions, leaving only a quarter of the material behind. Those will be the front legs, where the stretchers will be cut at a 45 degrees angle to lap around the cut. The back legs will need just a simple half lap. You can see there, only a quarter of the material is left. Then it's time to put the pieces where they belong. We'll put the stretchers inside each groove to test fit. They're a little tight, so I just CA glue some 120 grit sandpaper to a piece of scrap wood and smooth the surfaces on both the stretcher and the groove. That will prevent splitting the corners of the joinery once we go for final assembly. This process will only take a couple minutes for the whole build, but it makes everything fit snugly. Once we find the fit we like, I grab my high-tech dust-removing gadget to keep the workspace comfortable. 
you wouldn't believe how many times I had to record that sentence because I wanted to say workplace or workspace or workplace. But regardless, remember to label each lot and stretcher so you remember where every strip goes later. Then it's just a matter of repeating the process for every leg and every slot and prep for a glue up. I found that whistling performance in the footage while editing and decided to share. I think it's important to be happy when you're working. The glue up should be simple. Just follow the labels you marked in the previous step and do a bit at a time. If you wish to attach the whole thing together, there's nothing stopping you. I think. I still don't really know who you are. But I am limited by the amount of clamps I own, so I'll just glue up each side, then, once it's dry, I can glue up the front piece connecting those sides. Impossible to screw up. Well, I screwed up. As you can see here, I glued up two identical pieces. Two left pieces, to be more accurate. The sides should have been mirrored. If they were, I'd be able to mirror both corners like this. Had I been building this for a client, this would be the time for a trip to the lumber store and rebuild under the legs. But since this is just a practical piece for later they use in my house, I'll come up with an alternative solution. And while we consider the possible solutions, let us keep on gluing. And let me share with you a trick to glue up something that is not easy to clamp. Oh look! <laughs> That's the sound of whiskey and tequila asking you to like, comment and subscribe. This is tequila, by the way. Well, the rear end of it. As for the trick, most of you probably know it, but I learned everything from YouTube and if I can help at least one person, it will have been worth it. Oh, that's tequila in her full glory, by the way. She is the head of human resources here. The trick is just to put a drop of CA glue with the regular wood glue when joining. The CA glue is not very strong, but it should keep the surface steady while the actual strength comes from the slower drying wood glue. The CA glue basically acts as a makeshift clamp. And since this was a place that was hard to get an actual clamp, it should do the trick. Time to fix the mistake, we're gonna use some pocket hole screws. I just squared up the end of one of the sides of the stretcher and added pocket holes to them. We'll later cover those holes with some strips that are yet to be produced, but this is not a bug, this is a feature. So it's time to sand the strips. These are gonna make the step the actual platform and now the strips to cover the pocket holes. And then it's time to sand. We sand each and every one of the strips. This can take some time, but we gotta do it. Sanding is not optional. But it ends! And then it's time to paint, if you want. I know not everybody likes to use paint in their projects. But I chose this dark green color for the step and the platform, and I really like the result. I actually used the whole can for this. We're gonna use screws to fix the slats to the platform and step. So I made this quick jig, just to, to mark the position that I need to drill in every slat. And I drew them all. Then all that's left is to put on some finish. I used three coats of boiled linseed oil. And this is the final result. The purpose of the tower is to grant access to kids to places they wouldn't usually reach, like the sink or the countertop or table. My daughter likes to use it to have dinner with us at the same table we do. The 
child just steps in through that step on the right and stands on the tower. Here in the front you can see the slats that I used to cover the pocket holes and this is the final result.